There's a new threat out there. It's crypto, and it is being used for terrorist financing. It is being used for drug trafficking. North Korea is using it to pay for about half of its nuclear weapons program. We can't allow that to continue. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, December 8th, 2023. Yes, that was Elizabeth Warren, Senator Elizabeth Warren, making a bold proclamation that we cannot we cannot allow crypto, this dangerous, crazy, criminal internet money to continue. If you have any comments on that, email me, matt at dailycryptonews.net. And do me a favor, go to Apple Podcasts, like, subscribe, share, click those five stars, and leave us a comment, please. Today is the day that we know... We hopefully know where Shohei Otani is going to go play baseball next year. Um, I'm hoping it's Cleveland. I highly doubt it, but I hope it's Cleveland. Anyway, if it is Cleveland, you're going to see me rush out and buy season tickets next year. It's going to be exciting, but we will find out. Are you guys baseball fans? I don't even know. We all know we're crypto fans, but who's your home team? Again, email me, matt at dailycryptonews.net. Let's get into some daily crypto news with Asia Focus and stop my rambling. Welcome back to Asia Focus, a weekly section of Daily Crypto News. I'm Sarah. I've been to Next Block Expo in Berlin this week. It seems like Europeans are also interested in Asian crypto scene there. Feel free to email me at sarah at dailycryptonews.net. Let's get started. Binance Japan commenced its full operation on the 2nd of December, firmly establishing its presence under clear regulatory guidelines set by the Japanese government. The interesting thing about this operation is that this time Binance showed full cooperation with the regulatory body to enhance consumer protection, prevent money laundering, and foster a more secure trading environment. And of course, this could have been very hard if Japanese government hadn't given a chance to crypto exchanges. I think this is a big win-win for both crypto and the regulatory side. We are not 100% sure on the future control over the exchange, but this launch definitely marks the recognition of cryptocurrency as a legitimate financial asset class. It's a matter of time that private sector, other financial institutions jump into creating different financial products and eventually revive Japanese crypto users. In addition to the existing 34 tokens available, Binance listed 13 new tokens, including HBAR, NIR, OPE, IMX, Arbitrum, GRT, RNDR, MANA, EOS, GALA, APE, PLAY, LSK. Hopefully this trend will continue and avoid any Mt. Gox kind of situation. 28 crypto exchanges and VDA, virtual digital asset intermediaries providing service in India will be required to undertake KYC on their clients and platform users. This step follows the government's announcement in March under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act, PMLA. And this act applies to offshore crypto exchanges serving the Indian market. We remember the 13% tax on crypto profit in India. And of course, this all came from the collapse of FTX, DOJ fighting, Binance, etc. I mean, KYC in centralized exchange itself, it is kind of a must everywhere. So it wouldn't really make much impact. But the tone of this news is definitely not so favorable. India is supposed to create some frameworks for crypto regulations, but let's see how that goes with this act. The Monetary Authority of Singapore, MAS, has published the final part of its consultation response on conduct and consumer protection obligations for crypto businesses. The report provides central bank feedback on a crypto regulatory framework. We're talking about regulations today a bit. Let's dive a little bit deeper into this one. It states that all retail investors must pass a risk awareness assessment before investing. DPTSPs, digital payment token service providers, are not permitted to offer incentives to attract retail investors. They can list self-issued tokens, but they must disclose the appropriate information to customers. The companies will not offer debt-financed or leveraged crypto transactions to retail traders. Crypto payment firms should not trade on their own platforms and need to segregate activities such as market making and acting as a broker. 
crypto firms must identify and mitigate conflicts of interest appropriately and disclose token listing and governance policies to clients. I mean, there are many more things than just these few that crypto firms have to do or not to do. But it doesn't sound that off, given all the shenanigans that we've been through. If you think about other financial firms in the traditional finance, this all actually makes sense. Some details to be ironed out, like what are the crypto firms exactly, what kind of incentives we're talking about for attracting retail investors, it could be airdrops, it could be promotions, etc, etc. But we're on the right path to consumer protection. There was this interview done by The Defiant about regulations, the FTX collapse some time ago, and it says something like, if we had some sort of regulations over how a crypto company should operate, we just might have avoided the craziest impact and collapse of all time. According to PitchBook's report, over 11% of global VC funding in blockchain and crypto was funneled towards ventures based in Hong Kong and Singapore throughout 2023. It seems like regulatory uncertainties and the effects of major crypto firms like Binance and Gemini falling foul of authorities have forced many companies to reduce the size and magnitude for their US operations. And overall, crypto funding dropped by more than 60% in the third quarter of 2023 compared to the same period in 2022. So it's Asia people, Asia. South Korea's five biggest crypto exchanges will team up with financial regulators to search for, quote, undeclared crypto operators, end quote. Remember DAXA, the Digital Asset Exchange Association, which comprises the exchanges Upbit, Bitham, CoinOne, Corbit, and GoPax. Basically, those exchanges who got permission to deal cryptocurrencies in Korea with Korean One. The Financial Services Commission FSC in Korea and DAXA have asked people to come forward with anonymous tip-offs about undeclared virtual asset business operators. This will include not only exchanges operating in Korea, but also those who targets Korean users. Sounds familiar? Indian government is doing similar stuff, huh? Well, they didn't say what they're going to do but they could surely order to seize operation. Things are getting tougher in Asia, peeps. Buckle up or go to DAX. Of course, only if you want to. That's all for today. And in some other news, a federal judge in Seattle ruled that CZ must remain in the United States. And this is months leading up to his sentencing on criminal charges related to anti-money laundering violations. The judge said the court agrees with the government that this is an unusual case. The defendant has enormous wealth and property abroad and no ties to the United States. The lack of extradition treaty between the United States and the UAE posed too great of a flight risk, meaning that CZ got money, he has property, he has family abroad, and the place that he lives doesn't have an extradition treaty with the United States, so might as well keep him here. I can't disagree, to be honest with you. I don't think CZ would run because he's far too recognizable and far too famous to just disappear. But still, I think this is a good move. What do you think? Blockchain infrastructure provider Layer Zero Labs will have a token in the first half of 2024. And they said this in an X post. Layer Zero has always been built with the ability to have a native token within its protocol. As can be seen with the immutable code launched on day one. We've heard the community discussions over the past few months and the lack of clear communication around this. We'll state now in no uncertain terms that there will be a layer zero token. Its distribution is something we're committed to getting right and expect it to happen in the first half of 2024. Layer zero is pretty damn popular. A lot of people are talking about it. A lot of people are trying to find a way, I guess, to wet their beak. Remember, in less than a week this past spring, Layer Zero closed two separate venture capital rounds totaling around $255 million. This process tripled its valuation to around $3 billion. Chainlink, they recently debuted a staking pool for the community members, and it reached its maximum limit on Thursday, drawing in more than $620 million. That's nearly $41 million link tokens. Speaking of prices, speaking of tokens, let's get into those crypto prices. Here comes the money. Here we 
go. Money talk. And before we get into those crypto prices really quick, um, remember Bitcoin ordinals? Well, there was one called the Honey Badger. And Honey Badger inscription number eight, created January 15th of this year, sold on Magic Eden for a record of 10.4 Bitcoin or $450,000. And the time is 10.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Fear greed is at 81. Extremely greedy. Bitcoin is sitting at $43,874, up 0.7% in 24, 14.3 in 7. Ethereum's at $2,366, up 3.8% in 24, 13.9 in 7. Teller's number 3. Binance is at 335, up 1.8% in 24. And XRP's at 65.3 cents, up 3.2%. Running off the top 10, we have Solana, 72.80, up 13.5 in 24, or 21.2 in 7. Why didn't I beat TFD? Why? Because I was crying because I was holding bags. USDC is number seven, Cardano. <laughs> wow, Cardano is at 53 cents, up 21.2% in 24, or 40% in seven. Wow. Doge is number nine at 9.8 cents, up 3.2%. And Avalanche is at 28.20, up 7% in 24, or 26.2 in seven. This is, this is an altcoin rally. The total market cap is at 1.63 trillion, up 2.5% in 24. We have a Bitcoin dominance of 52.8 and an ETH dominance of 17.5. And that was our show today. I hope you have a great weekend. I hope I do too. And until Monday, happy hodling, everyone.